Here I've um, drawn out uh, the formulas that uh, are mostly used in the higher uh, tier exam um, that are not given to you at the front of the booklet. So it's quite important that you uh, try and make your own uh, copy of this and basically keep practicing copying it out, cover it up, copy it out, cover it up, copy it out until it becomes natural. Usually if you do that uh, for about 10 minutes over a five day period then these formulas you'll start remembering them uh, really well. So if we go through uh, each one, just quickly describing uh, what they're about. So we start with proportion. Um, we recognize there's two types of proportion. Uh, direct proportion, whereas one variable increases, the other variable increases. Um, the graph of that is a straight line going through zero. And the two variables are always related by y equals kx, uh, k being the constant of uh, proportionality. Um, you're always given two values in the exam question to find the value of k, and then you can write down the rule. Remember y and x could be any variables that they give you and uh, to watch out for things like the x variable it could be given as uh, something squared so be careful that you change this to something equals k r squared for example if they told you that something was in relation to the square of r. Uh, inverse proportion, we need to remember that uh, it's the opposite way around so we do y equals k over x and the graph goes in the inverse direction so as one variable increases the other decreases. Um, if you see an exam question with a right angle triangle in it, then it's likely to be Pythagoras or trigonometry or, or similar triangles if there's two or more of those triangles. Um, so you tend to look for the information and if the question doesn't involve an angle, then it's more than likely to be Pythagoras. And Pythagoras is reasonably okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, uh, but you've always got to remember that the c position always has to be the hypotenuse, the opposite one to the angle, the longest side. Um, trigonometry, um, or again, when you see an exam question looking at using a right angle triangle in some way, or they give you a picture where you can create a right angle triangle, then if it involves an angle, then it's very likely to be something to do with trigonometry. So one of the ways that uh, most people learn this is through a mnemonic, uh, so, ka, toa. So if you remember that uh, S is the sine, O the opposite length, H the hypotenuse, C is the cosine of the angle, and A is the adjacent side length and H is the hypotenuse length and then we've got the tangent. So basically label the triangle up when you get that, um, put the theta where the angle is and then label it uh, the triangle accordingly, opposite the angle, adjacent to the angle and then the hypotenuse being the longest side. These triangles uh, can sometimes help when um, you struggle to rearrange formulas. So if you draw out these triangles when you're finding lengths then it's uh, quite uh, straightforward to then if you want uh, the opposite length you'd cover that up and then these two are next to each other so they'd be times and if you want the hypotenuse length then you'd uh, cover that up and then you do the opposite length divide by the sine of the angle. Most important thing remember when you're doing uh, trigonometry work on your calculator make sure it's in degrees mode. We have uh, the straight line formulas um, so we have y equals mx plus c which is the uh, standard equation for any straight line um, the C point is the coordinate where the line crosses the Y axis when X is zero and you've got the gradient of the line, how steep it is. So for every one unit on the uh, X direction, whatever you go up to join the line again uh, to right angle, that's the uh, gradient, how steep it is. And if you are not given enough information uh, like the, the line drawn, then sometimes you're given coordinates and you have to calculate the gradient. Well, the gradient uh, is calculated by doing the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. Uh, some people remember this as uh, rise over run. So, how far up you've gone to get up to the back up to the tr straight line, and how far across you've gone. So, we need to be able to calculate the gradient. The straight line also uh, goes into a high level work uh, with perpendicular lines, and we've just got to remember a simple rule that if we've got perpendicular lines, those that meet at right angles or cross at right angles, then the two gradients multiplied together must give you an answer of minus one, negative one. We also need to remember the polygon rule. Um, so basically a polygon, any straight sided shape like your hexagons, your octagons, uh, we've got to remember there's an exterior angle to these, the amount of degrees you turn to go back down uh, the next side of the uh, polygon. And the exterior angle is always 360 divided by the number of sides. Uh, basically because if you go around any polygon, then you will always uh, add up to 360 degrees all the uh, exterior angles. 
Um, this formula for exterior angle though only works for regular polygons, so you've got to look for that keyword in the exam question. Um, the interior angle of a polygon and the exterior angle of a polygon both add up to 180 degrees. Scale factors, uh, we've got the standard 2D scale factor where we're going from say a rectangle to a larger rectangle so we can take the lengths of corresponding sides, uh, the new length divided by the old length gives us what we call the linear scale factor, how lengths have changed. Um, but at A grades we've got to remember that there are two other types of scale factors, we've got the area scale factor which is related to the linear scale factor squared and we've got the volume scale factor which is related to the linear scale factor cubed. Um, sometimes they give you information to calculate a volume scale factor and you need to find an area scale factor. So just remember that to get back to a linear scale factor, the opposite of cubing is cube rooting. And then once you've got the linear scale factor, you can then square that answer to get the area scale factor. Um, look out for keyword in the exam questions. Uh, they'll use that word mathematically similar or they'll just say that these two shapes are similar. Um, percentages, um, it's going to be in your exam, so it's worth uh, just practicing and remembering uh, some simple ideas for percentages. Um, if you're after a question that says uh, what's the uh, percent change, then you look at doing a fraction, so the change in the value divided by the original value times 100. Um, if a question talks about something increasing or decreasing, then it's likely to be using the uh, compound formula, and so therefore you take the original value times by the percentage multiplier raised to the power of n, where n is the number of years. To get the percentage multiplier, uh, we're literally going to be looking at doing 1 plus the, uh, the percent as a decimal if it's an increase, or 1 minus the percent as a decimal if it's a decrease. So for example, if we've got a 5% decrease problem, then we would take 0 0.05, the decimal of 5%, away from 1, and our percentage multiplier would be 0.95. Area formulas, um, triangle, just remember base times perpendicular height divided by 2. Uh, the circle, uh, keep singing that circle song to each other. And basically, pi r squared sounds like area to me. When I need circumference, I'll use pi d. So remember that for the full circle. Um, sector area, at uh, the higher level, well, remember a sector is just a fraction of a circle. So theta is the angle that they give you to how big the sector is. Um, divide that by 360 so you get the fraction of the full circle and then times it by the relevant formula if you want sector area then you're going to do three theta over 360 times pi r squared and if you want the arc length the distance going around the outside of the sector then you want to be doing the fraction of theta over 360 times pi d. Volume um, Basically, uh, the volume formulas are given to you in the exam. Uh, they give you the fact that the volume of a prism is the cross-sectional area times the length. But sometimes it's uh, quicker to remember things like the cylinder is pi r squared, the circle area, times its uh, length. Uh, it's, we tend to call that the height of the cylinder. Uh, the pyramid, well, they give you the formula for the pyramid of the cone at the front of the exam. Um, just remember that all pyramids follow the same pattern. Um, a pyramid, a uh, general pyramid for a square base, for example, then you do the third times the base area, so the area of the square, times the height, where the height has to be measured perpendicularly. So the height is above the center of the base. And those are the formulas um, that are not given to you within your uh, higher exam. So, like I say, remember these well, uh, practice them. Um, basically, the quickest way to me is you get a big sheet of paper, try and copy out um, the diagram and go have a look at the original and if you get it all right brilliant if not then fill in the missing ones and then try it again the following day again copy it all out see what's missing until you can do it without uh, making any mistakes and then you'll have those formulas in your mind usually over five days you can remember all these formulas well good luck in your exam